So in this video, we'll talk about less source accounting. And as we discussed, less source accounting can be divided into two parts, finance lease and operating lease. So we're going to talk about finance lease. First of all, finance lease is kind of an, a mirror image of what Lessie does in his own lease. Because when we discuss Lessie accounting, uh, Lessie recognize a uh, payable and recognize the asset. So the initial recognition of for the Lessie was debiting the asset and crediting the liability. But because the lesser in the finance lease is presumed to be selling the asset on credit, therefore the initial recognition in the lesser's book would be such that the lesser would be crediting the asset and debiting the receivable. Now what we have to consider is at what amount should the asset be credited and at what amount should the receivable be debited. And uh, a hint about that uh, specific thing has been discussed previously in our definition of interest rate implicit in the lease. So we already know what we what those amount would be. We just need a reminder of how we understood those things. So first of all, we talked about that the, the interest rate implicit in the lease is a rate that would present value the lease payments saved by the lesser under a finance lease and any unguaranteed residual value accruing to the lessor. The interest rate implicit in the lease is the rate that would present value these two things such that they equal to the other two things which are fair value of the asset and the initial direct cost to the lessor which are obviously incurred at the initial stage. So. We already know that the components involved. We know that initially the lessor is putting in an investment and that investment is the fair value of his asset. And he's also paying the amount for initial direct costs. And what he's getting in the future are the lease payments and the residual value by selling the asset if he gets it in the end. So when we present value the future, future cash flows, uh, such that they equal to the present value, uh, to the fair value of the asset and the initial direct cost or less so, then that rate is called interest rate implicit in the lease. So basically, those future amounts, which are the lease payments and the unguarded value, together without present valuing, if we sum them up, they are called gross investment in the lease. Right? So gross investment in the lease is the aggregate of the lease payments receivable by lessor under a finance lease and any unguaranteed residual value accruing to the lessor. Now, if we present value these two things, they become net investment in the lease. So coming back to the equation of our initial recognition, when we initially recognize uh, a lease in the books of a lessor and the lease is a finance lease, then we credit the asset and debit the receivable. So the receivable is debited by the amount that we just defined as net investment in the lease. So receivable is debited by the amount of net investment in the lease. And what is credit is the fair value of the asset, which means the asset which was initially in the book of the lessor would be credited, which means the lessor is de-recognizing that asset. And because it is de-recognizing, it also means that in the future, the lessor will not be recording the depreciation because essentially the lessor has substantially sold the asset to the lessee, right? And another entry, if there are certain initial direct costs, then bank would also be credited. So these are the initial recognition entries for a lessor. In the next video, we'll talk about a subsequent measurement and subsequent measurement basically means the re receiving of the payments from the less lessee with interest.